Thank you for choosing to listen to this message by our pastor, Brother Mike Beachy. Let us join now with the saints of God with open hearts and minds into a service already in progress. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches.
sin of the world. Don't you love him this morning? Ain't you proud that he's your father this morning? Praise the Lord. Let's sing that chorus together, Born Again. We'll turn it back to Dad. Woo, praise God. Praise the Lord. Born again, I'm free from sin and I'm happy now. You can be seated if you like. Amen. If you've had the privilege for Christ Jesus to deal with your heart and uh, convict you of your sins and make you to look at your life and say, my God, I need to make a change. You know what? That's a blessing. That's a blessing. A lot of people don't get that blessing. You know, sometimes the, the, they may hear something about the Lord and they say, ah, that's a make-believe. That's a myth. You know, let me go on to my ball game. Let me go on. To... But if you've been privileged, you know, God has helped you in your heart to believe. Oh, my Lord, what a privilege. What a privilege. That's why we can say we're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Amen. Blessed going in. Blessed coming out. In the storms, we're blessed. In the sunshine, we're blessed. In the good times, we're blessed. In the bad times, we're blessed. Amen. Because we know by and by when this thing's all over, we done read the back of the book, we know how it ends, and it ends good for us. Amen. Praise God. Where the 
church stands strong Back to where there is a right There is a wrong Back to where it's black or white You see the difference It's like day and night We're going back to things above We're going back Like a sleeping child Standing tall in God's strength and might The power we've claimed for so long Is it returning? Oh, we're being made strong We're not looking to the right or the Church, we gotta go back to Calvary's cross. We've gotta go back to living truth. We're going back to the absolute. Back to where the church stands strong. Back to where there is a right. And there is a wrong back to where it's black or white. You see the difference, it's like day and night. We're going back to things above. We're going back to our first love. We've got to go back. Back to where the church stands strong Back to where there is a right There is a wrong Back to where it's black or white You see the difference, it's like day and night We're going back to things above we're going back to our first love.
shadows dark and lonely I gave up on finding that strong and lasting love and I tasted all the things that sin could think to offer me but today I
is here. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your kindness, for your saving grace. Oh, Lord, the mercy that you have bestowed upon us, dear God. May we not squander the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we ask that you would heal, that you would save, that you would deliver, dear Heavenly Father. Set the captive free, dear God. Draw us, draw us near to the cross. Draw us near to that wonderful word. Oh, Lord, by your precious Holy Spirit, dear God. Oh, Lord, touch our hearts. Uplift our spirits. Open our minds, dear God, that we could receive, Lord, what you would have for us in this day and hour, dear God. Oh, Lord, may you be revealed to us, oh, Heavenly Father. Change us, dear God. Change us, dear Heavenly Father from the inside out. Oh, Lord, and we just give you the praise and all the glory. Jesus' precious holy name. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Truly, he keeps his promises. His promises are yea and amen, and He said that if we would come together, one mind, and I say in one mind, one accord, if we come together in his name, he said, I'll be in the midst. I'm glad he keeps his promises. Somebody come in the name of Jesus. (laughs) I know you did. Amen. Come in that identity. We lose our identity. Amen. Amen. Take on the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And that's what we're here for is to help you somehow to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and see if there's something that we can do. We want to do our part. We could help you, point you in the right direction. You know, we could draw closer to the cross of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me, Jesus said. And his words are still relevant for the day that we're living in. Still just as true. Hasn't changed one bit. And it's still good today. Amen. I'm glad we got a rock that we can stand on. Man, we've got a rock that we can stand on. It's such a wonderful thing. I've had several things on my heart. and I don't know. We'll just see what the Lord would speak to us today. We had a, a good day yesterday. We was down with Brother Tally and some of the brethren. And, you know, it was quite encouraging to look and see about, you know, probably 18 different ministers or pastors come together and, and then the other brethren that was there and, uh, to discuss the things of God. So I'm asking, you know, where are we at? You know, I was sitting there at the table and I was looking around. And I thought, Lord, how powerful this could be. You know, this can be so powerful to see men willing to to set aside differences and come together and see what the Word of God has to say about things. And there was some things brought up, and uh, there was kind of a theme yesterday. First brother, he asked the question about the latter-day rain. Uh, We think of rain maybe as rain coming down. I think he was thinking of the latter rain as to the rain even of Christ or in the day 
the day that we're living in. Some would call it the awakening. Some would, you know, different terms that we would have. And uh, talking about that and where we're at and how we would recognize and what's going to bring us closer into this. And there were several comments and things and kind of centered around, you know, being united. How, how many knows we've got to be united in Christ? I've done figured out, been seen enough that, uh, uh, that what little bit I've been around that, you know, we're not going to come together in our own minds. We're not going to do it. It's just, you know, I, I, I'm going to like it one way. You're going to like it another way. We're going to have different opinions and different outlooks. Uh, as someone was saying, you can take two brethren that's loved the Lord, that's been in the gospel for years and years and years. They can read a scripture and one come up with one thing and one come up with another. And you think, my Lord, how in the world do we do this, you know? But there's one way that we can come together, and that's through the mind of Christ. Amen. And and so there were some very wonderful examples given, and, and I believe the Lord spoke to my heart a few times there and, and, and dealt some things. And then there was also some, uh, the discussion of restoration. And uh, You know, how many knows we, that the Bible speaks in Galatians about if 6 and 1, if, if you're going to restore, uh, he just going to restore us be spiritual. And talking about restoring a brother. And uh, I believe we've got some brethren that need to be restored. Amen. I believe there's some brethren that need to be restored. And, uh, but he talks about these things, and it was just a good conversation. And it was quite striking because during all of this, it was talking about that. And then when we broke for lunch, I, 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 I thought that I had left my Bible. Uh, I had left it open and at the table, and I, I thought I would left it at Galatians 6 and 1. Because that's what Brother Tal had mentioned, and they was talking about. I wanted to get some, get some input on that. And I, I thought that's where I left it. I, I was pretty sure that's where I left it, you know. But when I came back, it was in First Peter, and I was like, Lord, I looked at it, and I was like, What is this here? You know, I was looking through some of it, and, and then I, I spotted a verse over here, and I said, This is what you're trying to say, Lord. And uh, I, I was just and there again, and I wanted to read this because. Thinking about this, it was the, the illustration used about even the watchman on the wall. And how did, you know, the Bible, we, we see the Bible speaks of every man seeing eye to eye. Or that those in the last day, they would see eye to eye. And they was talking about the watchman on the wall and how that referred to that as to watching and protecting the city. And as they stood up there, Seeing eye to eye, each one could see the other one's position, and when they turned, they could see eye to eye. And so they had that part covered. They had that part covered. So when we come together, not only as the watchman, but even as the children of God, you know, when we have the same goals and purposes in mind, that's what we're here for. You know, and that's the way it is with the ministry. We should, you know, whether we approach it from different angles, whether we see it, uh, understand it, one thing we got to remember, there's different levels in Christ, just like there is in the natural. And we send children to school. We don't expect out of the first grader uh, what the 12th grader has. And, and there's a lot of grades in between there. And so there is a growth process. That happens even in ministry. We, we're all growing. We're still, you know, I, I don't ever want to get to the place that I feel like I've arrived. I, I don't want to get there. I, I want to, you know, always be striving and looking and learning and listening and and uh, and when I, I heard some wonderful things yesterday. Heard some wonderful things. Uh, Brother Brentley from Dallas, uh, South South North Carolina, up there. He he began to expound on that there Galatians six and one, and did a wonderful job. He explained some things. That brother's been here with us with Brother Driver, and uh, did a wonderful job. Just brought out some beautiful things. And, and there was a number of things. Uh, Brother Veely. Uh, got up and began to speak about our that first and second husband. I believe that's in Romans, maybe it's chapter 7. It talks about that first one dying out uh, right there in Romans uh, 5, 6, and 7. It talks about these things. And, and that first husband, that first man, how many knows we got to die? You know, that, that's, that's a message we're not hearing in the church. But uh, if we want Christ to live, then we've got to die out to self. And uh, it's such a wonderful, beautiful thing because we realize that the more that I die, the more I live, you know. And, uh, and that, that kind of does bring in another passage of Scripture that I would have loved to got to, but I don't know that I can get to everything today. So we just have to see where we go. But uh, 
I was thinking about that sin eye to eye. They had the same goal. They had the same purpose. They were there for the same reason. That was for the security of the city. That's why the Washington was supposed to be. We're supposed to be there for the security of the city, to, to protect God's people, to, to watch out for the wolves that try to sneak in. And, uh, and so we see these things, and, and, and then another brother was talking about how sometimes there's differences between us, and maybe we get at odds. But he said, you know, if you got one brother on one side and another brother on the other side, and you have Christ in the middle, all we've got to do is draw nigh to Christ. And I thought, how wonderful. And, and I thought about that and thought, well, how do we come to this place? How we do we come to a, a, a place of this latter day reign or this here latter movement of God and the awakening, as we might say, or, or see where the ministry's at or see where God's at with his church? And there, there was two things, and I'm sure that, you know, good speakers and things could come up with numbers of points and PowerPoints and do all kinds of things, but I've come up with two so far, so we'll just deal with that. But there's two things I believe that is essential that I believe will change our walk, even, you know, and, and I say change our walk, will enhance our walk, whatever you might want to say. But that is, one, that is, uh, uh, is what he said right there, drawing nearer to Christ. Number one, we've got to draw nigh to God. He said if we will draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. So that's number one. We have got to draw nigh to Christ. Well, how do we do that? Get in his word. Right here is the number one place. This is the number one place. The second place is get on your knees. Jesus said to go into that closet and pray. Spend time alone with Christ. And in this world that we're living in, that is a... A, 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 a commodity, that is something that is so precious that Satan has stolen from the church. He's stolen. He's taken it out of our lives because we are so busy. There's so many things. There's something always blaring. There's something going on and that keep our attention, to keep our minds, and Satan has taken that. Get in his word and get some time alone with Christ. Another thing that we need to do, and especially the ministry, but all of us, but especially the ministry, is become sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I need to in my life. You need to in your life. But like I say, especially men, we need to get sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That we can hear him. That we can listen. That we can act. That we can move when he speaks. We need that. And I'm telling you, if we will do those things, let me tell you, it'll, it'll eradicate our problems. It'll eradicate our divisions. It will move these things. We will begin to find things that, that we can communicate on instead of trying to find things to divide us. And we can do that, and we, we've got to have that. We've got to have, you know, as the thing was, the love of Christ, the love of God. That, how many times did Jesus tell us that? And, and he told us these things and, and to bear one another's burdens, these things. But it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, Verse 8, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be cor courageous, Courteous. Be pitiful, be courteous. Now, it even speaks there as, as courteous, tender-hearted. Be tender-hearted to one another. We think of pitiful, we think of it maybe as a, as a pity thing. But no, be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Love one another. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Be courteous. Be kind-hearted. Be tender-hearted. Love one another. Be long-suffering. Patient. 
kind. What's it talk about? The fruits of the Spirit, love, charity, all these things. And then it says, not rendering evil for reason, but blessing, knowing that there unto you are called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. And the love of God in our heart is such a powerful, powerful thing. Such a powerful thing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's a couple of other things that the Lord will allow. Maybe we can bring into this. And I may end up touching on, like I say, spreading out here a little bit. We'll see. I just thought that was so wonderful. Finally, be of one mind. Be of the same mind. Be for the same purpose. You know, let, let's move the church of the Lord forward. Amen. We'll just begin at verse 1. In this chapter, I heard Brother Pike ministering on this the other day, and my, I can't preach it like he can, but this here covers such a wide spectrum. It is such a wonderful passage of Scripture here. It is chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. And it's just a wonderful thing. So let's just read it. See if the Lord would speak to our hearts. Amen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain saying, hold fast that doctrine that I've taught you. I'm saying, hold on to this. If you hold this, this, this word, it said, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered it unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of season. Paul, he, he wants to substantiate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The life. You know, we, we think of the birth, the, the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection. And he wants to step substantiate this and, and establish this and lay a foundation. And he said, according to the scriptures. And if you go over in Psalms, you read that it was prophesied about it and that he would not let his soul remain in hell. And these things were prophesied in the Old Testament. There were so many prophecies concerning the Messiah. And, and as they say, the chances of someone fulfilling those prophecies as, say, by chance, is just almost unconceivable. But to think that he fulfilled these prophecies, every one of them, and here he is. And Paul's saying, I want to substantiate this according to the Old Testament. It was prophesied. It's there. And then, not only that, but there's been witnesses. A lot of people, they want to, you know, dispute. Oh, that was just a book that men wrote. 
I agree. As they were inspired by God. Men did write it, but they were inspired by God. How do we get so much continuity over hundreds of years, over so many different writers, and they keep digging up artifacts and things to prove the word is true? Over and over and over. It's such a wonderful thing. So Paul is, is trying to establish this. Then he was seen above 500. We have the scripture. We have the Old Testament talking about that. We see Jesus came fulfilled. And then we talk about this resurrection that they wanted to, to do away with. They wanted to uh, squelch it out. Oh, he, he was stolen during the night. They paid the guards. They did everything they could. Something that high profile, that should have been a, a, a signal right there. Something went awry. Because why didn't they put them guards to death? Back then, if you fell asleep on guard duty, you know, you didn't have another chance to do that. But here they are, all these things. That's what gets excited. is to know that Jesus Christ, he is alive. He's alive. After that, he was seen above 500. And after that, at last, he was seen of me also as one born out of season. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. I feel like Paul. Amen. I, I might be the least in the kingdom, but... By the grace of God, I am what I am. At least I'm a part of the kingdom. Amen. Thinking about being a member of the body of Christ, I'm a, I might be a small member, but I'm a member. Amen. By the grace of God, I am. That, and that's the stand we got to take. That's the foundation we can stand on. We can stand. We can, as someone was talking about yesterday, as to stand in hope. Hope in the scripture wasn't as the hope of what we think so. You know, we hope we're going to do the hope. No, it was, it was more of in a faith. It was in a positive. We have a hope. We have this hope within you. Christ in you is that hope of glory. Amen. I think about that. You know, sometimes you'll hear people and you, you see people talk about having the Holy Ghost and then you'll hear them, you know, all oh, things are just so bad and this and that and one thing and another. And praise God, I hope I can make it. I hope I can do this. I thought we said we had the Holy Ghost. Amen. I mean, if we got his spirit, he said, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you sealed till the day of redemption, till this body is redeemed. Amen. My spirit's been called away with Christ. It's hid in God in Christ, whom the heavens have received. It, it's dwelling in heavenly places. Yeah, I've got an outer man. I've got a fleshly part. But you know what? It's going to be redeemed. This here corruption is going to put on incorruption. Getting ahead of my scripture, ain't I? Oh, but what a glorious thing. I am what I am by the grace of God. And I am what I am by the grace of God. And I am a part of the great I am. <laughs> Amen. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet, not I, but the grace of God, which was in with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. That's what's important. The gospel was preached. You believed it. You can't believe it if it ain't preached. And how can it preach unless it's been sent? Faith comes by hearing that by the word. All these things, you know. He said, what difference does it make? He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And yet, then Paul realized, and that even that is not of me, but it is of Christ. If there's anything that good that comes out of me, it's not me, it's Christ. Because if it's me, it's going to be bad. But because it's Christ, 
we can allow Christ to live in this mortal body. It can be Christ living in us, living his life through us. Well, brother said, you know, about living for God. Why don't we just allow him to live for us? <laughs> Let him live through us. Amen. We can, we can enter into a rest of God to where we're not struggling in our spirit. We can find that peace. We can find that rest in Christ Jesus. That's why Paul was preaching the resurrection. That's why they were persecuted. And you know what? That's why you're going to be persecuted. He said, anyone that denies that Christ is come in the flesh is an antichrist. He's, he is come in the flesh. Whose flesh has he come in? And we can say, Christ came, he's going to come, but that's it. Christ is. Goes back to that I am element. It goes back to that present tense word of God. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sins. There is no resurrection. If Christ isn't, didn't rise, raise from the dead, then where are we at? Same place we were from the beginning, lost. But you know what? He came to seek and to save the lost. The lost. That means there was someone that belonged to him from the beginning. Because you can't lose something you didn't have. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Ain't you glad he come to seek and to find you? Amen. While I was yet in my sins, he came. Then, they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most Miserable. If this is the only hope we have. Miserable. Ain't you glad this ain't the only hope we have? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. That slept. He's become the first fruit. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. I can't help but at this point go over to Romans chapter 6 for just a moment. <clears throat> what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that Christ may abound? God forbid. How shall we? that are dead to sin, live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, 
that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. And you could look at that as to what he says in chapter 7. For a woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. What is that? That's that old man. That's that first birth. It's dead. What? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified. That body of sin might, that that body of sin might be destroyed. That it might be done away with done away with. In Christ Jesus, that's done away with. Sometimes we say, well, what's, what's this conflict? Well, it's still some of the odors from that old dead man died. But there's coming a point in the time that the odor's going to be gone. The scent. Even the conscience of sin, he's done away with. He's given us a new nature. The problem is we're not walking in what he's given us. We're not believing his word. We're not taking his word for it. It says in Romans 8, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 6, 7, because the carnal mind is empty against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We're walking in. We keep talking about walking in the flesh. Why do we keep talking about the negatives? Why do we keep talking about the, the conflict side of life? We need to cross Jordan. See, we're eating our fruit from the wrong side. Where are we getting this fruit? A lot of it we're getting from the religious world. We're getting it from the music. We're getting it from the radio. We're getting it from the sermon sometimes that we listen to. I see some, I was thinking of one person. I enjoy, I've enjoyed their songs, their music, but I noticed they get more worldly and more worldly. We start out to do something for God. We start out humble and we start out and, 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 and then God blesses us and we try to do something. And then next thing we know, we become a star. And we got the pump and do hairdos and we got this and we got that. You can go back and there's some of those beautiful songs and singers and things. Some of them even had an anointing in their life. They started out and you, you can see the pictures and things. Next thing you know, the bobbed off hair and the makeup and the powder and the paint and the earrings, all these things, and they just become worldly. Just become worldly. Now, see some of these, and I look, and they become stars. No, that ain't what we need to do. What is it? It's losing our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. We lose that sensitivity, and we forget what we're here for. We're here for his kingdom, for his purpose, for his glory. And then the music becomes more worldly and more entertaining. And, and after a while, God's nowhere in the picture. And then you see them singing old country songs at the Grand Ole Opry. And some of these other things. See, in case you think that maybe I've overshot the runway. Yeah, there's some of these that go on there and if singing some of the old country singers' songs, maybe in tribute or whatever, but singing some of them old country love songs. A lot of people, what's wrong with that? Well, dwell on that and see where you get. 
See, does it glorify God? In all that we do. Paul said, if anything is virtuous, if anything is holy, if anything is pure, think on these things. If I'm thinking about my old girlfriends, my old boyfriends, all these things, am I thinking virtuous? Am I thinking them godly? Am I thinking holy? Am I thinking of things that's lifting me up? Or am I putting in things that's dragging me down? One thing we've got to be careful about, we can get a justification. We can get a sanctification. God will clean us up, pick us up. Boy, we feel good about things. And this is what happens to a lot of people that come to church. They get in church and they turn over a new leaf and things get better. And, and you know, maybe they stop their, their, their drugs and their alcohol and their, maybe their smoking or whatever it might be. And they kind of clean things up and they feel good about things. But they haven't gone on to receive His Spirit. They haven't gone on. And Jesus said, the house was swept and garnished. It was clean. The devil was run out. But then, they didn't get the seal of the Holy Spirit. They didn't get the safeguard. And the devil came back, and he couldn't get in. So he went and got seven more, worse than what he was. And he comes and gets in. You see people reject the Word of God. You see people come in when it's like, and then they reject it. And at one point, maybe they was just, just good common people. They didn't hardly do anything. They just, you know, just didn't really serve God. You know, maybe it was television or it's just their mind was consumed with work, hunting, fishing, whatever it might have been, you know, just not really bad. They just wasn't serving God. And then they come in and they, get around it and get cleaned up a little bit and they're going, but then they drift back off. Next time we see them, they're drunk. They're this, they're that, one thing or another. And you say, what in the world happened? Seven more devils. Worse than the first. And they come in, they push their way in. Push their way in. So we have to be careful about that. Make sure, God, we're making room for Jesus Christ. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. That old sin nature's got to be done away with. You can't just cover it up. You can't throw enough dirt. You can't throw enough water. You can't put enough baptism. You can't. No, it's going to take the Holy Spirit to work in our life, to root that thing out. Because let me tell you, if you don't, it will spring back up. You give it enough time, it will come back up. It'll show up again, that old sin nature. But Paul says in verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Sad to say, I feel like this is where a lot of the problem's at. There's a lot of people that are religious, but they don't have the Spirit of God. We need that Spirit of Christ living within us. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. If we're going to be changed, we've got to have something changed in here. The change ain't coming from out there somewhere. It's coming from in here. And if it ain't in here, then it ain't going to change. But if it's in here, you know what? It's going to change. It can't do anything else. It has to. That's the beautiful thing about it. it, it, it why? It's the Word of God. So back to 1 Corinthians 15. So now if Christ be risen from the dead, verse 20, he's become the first fruits. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom of to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. But I like that right there. Then cometh the end. Because when Christ comes into your life, he brings the end. He brings the end to old self. Ain't that wonderful? He brings an end. Oh, you know, some people are waiting for the end time. Well, I've had my end time. Have you had your end time? Have you come to that end? For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not again at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And we stand in jeopardy every hour. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me? If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. And I think about that last enemy to be destroyed. It says in all things, he said that the last enemy shall be death. It's going to be destroyed. That is saying that even the sleep of this natural body is going to be done away with. Even the time. We know that Christians don't die. Jesus said, if you believe the words that I say, you shall never die. And so if we believe that, then those that believe in Christ have never died. They may lay that body down, but that's not death. That's just changing garments. But I believe that that last part, I believe he's leaving to the body because he says in Romans 16, And verse 20, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I believe he's even using his body. As to his many membered body, those that members in particular. Being baptized for the dead. Reckon ourselves to be dead in Christ. Baptized into his body. That burial. Reckon ourselves to be dead. That's why we go down in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take on a new identity. Amen. We take on a new identity. It's no longer I that live, but it is Christ. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? With what body do they come? Says thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body which shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him and to every seed his own body. Go out there and plant the field. You know, you put that little kernel of corn down in there. You didn't plant the stalk. You didn't plant the ear. You didn't plant, you planted that little seed. But all that potential, all that life was within that. Think. He looked at us and he said, 
The Bible said he sat on the circle of the earth. He looked at men and beheld them as grasshoppers. You know, just in case we get to feeling like we're really something special. Be kind of strange, you know, to look up there and you see all these men stretched out across this debate stage. You know, smart, brilliant, rich, famous, you know. And say, what a wonderful night. Now we've gathered here and we've got about 12 different grasshoppers here. Let's see what they have to tell us. You know, with all our education, with all our science, at our best, God looks at us and he sees grasshoppers. Jacob, thou worm, Jacob, I'll help you. But remember, that worm, that's just the seed. Because if the word of God, that germatized life of God has come on the inside, it's just like the butterfly. It's wrapped in a cocoon. And, and, you know, you take that butterfly and you pull the wings off of it and you're back to a worm. But it's in that cocoon and it's, and it's wrapped up in there and it dies, you might say. It goes through a transformation. And it comes forth in a beautiful, heavenly little creature. And one thing you can't do, you can't help that butterfly out of that cocoon. You can't do that. I heard a story where someone tried to do this. You know, we're going to cut it open. We're going to help it out. You can't do that. It's got to have that cocoon because it's building strength. It's building muscle. You, these resistance, these things that we have are just to make us strong. Someone was talking about the silence of God the other day. What is it? He trusts you. He knows that you're going to come through this. It is for our good. And so when we have opposition, when it seems like maybe we're in the pressure cooker, the Bible says he wouldn't put any more on us than what we can bear. He wants to manifest your potential. But sometimes we're like that butterfly. We're like the little one. We're pushing and we're struggling. And sometimes we're saying, God, why, when, how, when is this going to be over? But he's saying, I want to manifest something great. I see the big picture. I want to show you my greatness. I want to be manifested through your life. And sometimes we look at it as as trials and temptations, or we look at it as burdens and, oh, how Satan is afflicting me. But if we could just see what God is doing, what God is working, how God is moving, how much he loves us. Reading the story of a young girl. She was raised in church, but she went astray. She got her mind drawn off. And she went astray. She was seeking her way back to God. That little still, small voice kept speaking to her. And she was trying to find her way. And she was, even went to a, a different church, so, well, I'll just do something new. And, and went there and She decided she would, they had a Christmas program coming up, so she would sign up for that so she could kind of get involved, get to know the people. She shows up for audition, and she's sitting there, and as people come in, she says she's sitting there, and no one recognizes her. No one looks at her. No one smiles to her. No one talks to her. Nobody engages in conversation. She says, God, at least let someone smile at me. Let someone talk. Prove that you love me. Show me that you still love me. Do something. And the whole thing went. Went through the audition, everything, and left. And no one still spoke to her. No one even looked at her. No one smiled at her. It's like she didn't. She said, here I am in the midst of all these people and felt so alone. Just begging. And she left and she was torn in her spirit. She said, oh, God. You must not love me, is there? Are you there? A few days later, her sister and her husband had come to visit. She said she started to her room, and her brother-in-law called out to her. He said, hey, 
That was on a Monday, and I think this was that following weekend. He says, where was you at Monday? I tried to call you. She said, well, I was over to church. He said, well, I was praying for you. And the Lord told me to stop praying and to call you, to tell you that he loved you. God went beyond just a smile. He went beyond someone just coming and talking. He wanted to make sure he made his point. I love you. To where there was no question. There was no rationale. There was no explaining it away. He was in a different town. Maybe a different state. How did he know anything? God cares for us. And sometimes we don't understand it. We can't see it because all we can see is what's happening at the moment. But there's so many things like that that God does. And he loves us. He cares for us. So this body, it's just a seed. It's the life that's on the inside that matters. This is just a shell. This is just a seed. It's going to be planted, but there's a potential on the inside. There's a life on the inside. And it ain't something that come from us, but it came from God. God give it a body as it had pleased him. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there's one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies. And bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There's a heavenly body and there's an earthly body. And Paul said, if this body be dissolved... I've got a better one in the heavens. Aren't you glad for that? There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. You know, a lot of times we look at each other. The Bible says they that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. We'll look at one person. We'll look at, we'll say, man, they're gifted. Or my, they can sing, or oh, they, they look, just look better. They got a better physique. They can speak, or they got talent. They got this, they got that. But that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with the potential of God on the inside of you. You're just as important to God as the next person, you're just as necessary. We're not here by happenstance, by chance. Sometimes our parents will tell us, you know, you were as a mistake. But I promise you, there's no mistakes in God. They might have thought you was a mistake. God didn't. You was there for a purpose, for a reason. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. There's something else that's coming forth. What you see is just an outer shell. All you see is a worm. But there's another life on the inside. I'm glad to think that's a hope. That is something to look forward to. To think that I ain't got to live with this thing throughout eternity. That could be discouraging. But to think that I'm going to have a body 
It's going to be glorified in his image, in his likeness. I know we hear people say, well, we were made in the likeness of God. We were, but there was a fall that took place. But because of regeneration, because of Calvary, because of the new birth, you know what? We come back to that place in the image of God. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Ain't that wonderful? We become a quickening spirit. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. The first was made in the likeness of Adam as to a living soul, which could sin, which could be cut off from God. Because sin, death came by sin. But I became a quickening spirit. So what did that do? It did away with that soul realm. Because my spirit cannot sin. I'm a new creature in Christ. How can you say that? Because it's his spirit. It's not mine. It's not mine. It's his. And can he sin? Of course not. So if it's not me, it's him. What Paul say? It's by his grace I am what I am. It's not me that's doing the work. It's him. It's his spirit. It's his life. How be it? That was, was not first which was spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. Ain't that beautiful how God did that? And that seed, that shell, that cocoon, that worm, it was that part that he was able to use to to house what he wanted to do. But that outer part had to die. In Adam, they all die. That was part of the process. So that that part could be done away so we could live. The first man is of the earth, earthy. That's why it goes back to the earth. It says, from the dust thou art to the dust thou shalt return. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That first one, the first man is of the earth, earthy. But we're going to bear the image of the heavenly. That second man is the Lord. We're going to bear the image of him. We not, might not know what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. He's saying just as sure as you have, had that natural birth, just as sure as you bore that natural image, just as sure as you're going to bear that heavenly image. And even more so. Why? Because he said it. It's in the Word. He promised it. And as we, as we have borne the image of the earth, we shall also, we shall, we might, We shall bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And if that same spirit be in you that raised Christ from the dead, it shall also quicken, change your mortal bodies. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Sometimes we quote that Paul says, there's a conflict. There's a, 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 a natural part there that there's a conflict. There's a continual warfare. Who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? Thanks be to God that gives us the victory. And this is even the victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He's telling us we have a resurrection. What a glorious thing. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. We have overcome. Amen, we have overcome. I think about that song you used to sing, I have overcome. We have overcome. And we say, you know, we've overcome someday, but praise God, we overcame someday, didn't we? That day was Calvary. That day was Calvary, some 2,000 years ago. So, oh, but how's that for us today? When we believe it, when we accept it, it is still relevant for the day that we're living in. It's still just as real. So he's done away with sin, folded up that law, he put it away. He crucified us at Calvary. We reckon ourselves to be dead. We're done away with, we're gone. That's why Paul said it's no longer I that live, but it is Christ. Now when the Heavenly Father looks at us, what's he see? He sees his dearly beloved son. He sees his dearly beloved son. That's what he sees when he sees you and I. He sees the Son of God. He became sin that I could become the righteousness of God. That I could become the righteousness of God. Think about that. The devil tells us all kinds of things. He became sin. What sin? My sin. That I could become the righteousness of God. How do we argue with that? Let's stop dwelling in the earth. Let's stop dwelling in the wilderness. Let's move over into Canaan land. Let's cross that carnal mind of death because that's what it is. It brings death. It kills us. Let's cross that. And let's begin to walk in the spirit so that we can walk in newness of life because that's where we belong. We're children of the resurrection. Amen. We're not of that first man, Adam. We're of the Lord from heaven. That's the image we're being conformed to. Can we stand? Being conformed to that glorious, beautiful image of the Son of God. Clothed in His righteousness. Then what, what does that look like? Well, you could go over there and read in Revelation, I believe it's 21. But it begins to talk about, John, let me show you that bride. That one that I've clothed in my righteousness. It says, put on beautiful garments, O Zion. That one I've clothed in that righteousness. And he began to talk about that beautiful city. That new Jerusalem coming down. Street of gold and walls of jasper, gates of pearl. All the beautiful things. Talking about that wonderful bride of Christ. And lively stones. Not dead. Lively. Lively stones. There's life. Why? Because Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. More abundantly. Filled up. Overflowing. Filled up and overflowing. 
That's the life of Christ. Oh, it's not, woe is me, and oh, I'm not going to be able to make it, and oh my, if I can just hold on another couple of days, and no, oh no. no. When we find our flat self in here, we begin to realize, you know, Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, if you'll drink from this water, you'll have wells of living water. Why? Because you're going to have the source. You're not only going to have water, you're going to have the source of water. We don't only have life, we have the source of life. We have the source of life. Just in our natural body, we have just the breath of life. Someone can knock that out of us. But no, in our spirit, we have the source of life. We have the source of all things dwelling within us. We just need to meditate upon his laws. Stir up that pure mind. What mind? That mind of Christ. That's what's important. Stir him up. Can we sing a chorus together? Altars are open this morning. Appreciate your time. Let's pray one for another. Love one another. The Bible says that we had love one to another. Not for another. Someone was saying yesterday, we might have love. We might have something. I could have a gift for you. But until I give it to you. So we can have love for someone, but can we give that love? Can we give it? That's what Christ wants us to do. Come in to my heart. Come in to my heart. Come in to my heart. Oh, Jesus. Come in.
want a closer walk with Him. And sing that chorus will give all the glory to Jesus. And we'll give all the glory to Jesus. We'll sing about Him. As we sing that again, is there anyone that would maybe step forward and stand in the gap for our sister Green? Is there anyone? It can be many. It can be all of you. It doesn't matter. I was thinking about this. I was being told about this. You know, daughter's sitting there at the hospital with her. Well, how would that be if that was my mother? Knowing that in a couple weeks, the doctors want to amputate her fingers and toes. How devastating. The recovery process. Trying to recover from this. How sad that would be. Just sing that course again. And we'll give all the glory to Jesus. And we'll sing about His love. Lord, we'll sing about Your love. And we will give all the glory Pray together, pray and believe. The Bible says if any two, three, agree touching anything, God will do it. God can reverse this thing. God can heal. God can cause that circulation of blood. He can bring oxygen back. He can bring healing. I think, Lord, all we need is just a little bit of the Holy Spirit that's in there just moving to that bloodstream. It's all it takes. That's all it takes. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you, Lord, we stand in the gap for our dear sister, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would move, Lord, even now into that hospital room, God, that you would touch that body, Lord. May the Holy Spirit move to that bloodstream, dear God. Move the infection, dear Heavenly Father. Bring oxygen, bring healing to those fingers, to those toes, to this body, dear God. Lord, we ask that you would grant it. I honor the faith of your saints, dear Heavenly Father, as we unite together in prayer. Oh, Lord, as we reach out and we beseech you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you said if we would ask in your name, Lord, we hold our sister up. We hold our brother up, dear Heavenly Father. We know that this must be a trying time for him, dear God. He's had many ailments in his body, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you would strengthen him. Oh, Lord, lift up his spirit. Lift up their faith even now, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, as we join with them in prayer, dear God. Oh, Lord, we just hold this petition before you, God. Lord, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for by your stripes we are healed. We were healed, dear Heavenly Father. And we thank you for this. Lord, we ask that we would draw closer to you. Draw us to the uh, Lord closer to the cross where our Savior died. Draw us closer to Christ, dear Heavenly Father. For Lord, we know that when we come closer to you, all our division, all of our our differences are going to fade away. And Lord, may we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Lord, and may we come together. Lord, you said finally, come together in one mind, dear God. 
Lord, may we have one goal. May we have one purpose, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, in life, that our life would be the life of Christ. Lord, may we unite as the body of Christ, as the church of the living God. May there be an awakening, dear Heavenly Father, of the Spirit of Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, if God, those that have drifted off, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you would restore, that you would renew, that you would reignite the fire, the flame of God burning on the inside of your people, dear God. Lord, Satan has done all that he can to divide, to scatter, to destroy, to discourage, to cast down, dear Heavenly Father. But Lord, we lift up in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak peace, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we speak reconciliation, dear God, to the body of Christ. Lord, wherever they may be, God, I know uh, what I'm talking about is not just people in the church, dear Lord, but those that have gone astray, dear God, that's searching. Lord, they know something is missing in their life. Lord, we ask that there would be a resurrection, a quickening from the dead, dear God. Oh, Lord, that this mighty church of God would move forward, dear Heavenly Father, even in hastening to the coming of the Lord. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus precious holy name we pray and we'll give all the glory to Jesus and we'll sing the mountains we'll sing about his love and we will give all the Of his walk for love, oh yes, we'll give all the glory to Jesus. We'll sing about his love. We'll sing about his love. Oh yes, we'll. reaching in and touching our hearts and changing our lives. Amen. Such a wonderful thing. So good to have you in the house of the Lord. So good to have Victor and his wife here with us. It just does my heart good to see him up here and hands lifted up to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And another is an answer to prayer. Amen. God still answers prayer. Amen. God is so good. Let's just sing that chorus. He paid a debt. Because he paid the debt. Amen. He went down to the flames of hell. He went to hell for you and I. He went down and took my place. Because of that, we can stand in his resurrection, in his life. Amen. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sleep. I owe the day I could not 
he paid a debt that I couldn't pay. Amen. Amen. Victor, why don't you come and dismiss us? Would you do that? Amen. May the Lord bless you. First, if Brother Mike don't mind. You know, God's been dealing with my heart. He's been dealing with my soul. And, you know, I, I try to live right, and God tries to keep us within his loving arms. And when we go out and we do things we know we're not supposed to do. God allows things to happen, you know, and when I decided to come back to church, you know, I said, God, I've been churched out, you know. Little Bethlehem, you know, our family, I said, God, I've been churched out. I don't want to go to church and fill a pew and, you know, and do the same routine that we do and dabble in the gossip of church politics. Lord, I go to church. I'm there to hear something from you. And whatever I'm dealing with, and even if I'm talking to my wife about something, you will come to church, and God, I have something for us. And you know, folks, those that have young ones out there lost, <laughs> you know, God sees that. And I tell Dad all the time, I say, God, <laughs> Sometimes we look at them and they might not be living like we think they should. But let us be all so grateful they're a child of God. And God, let us have the, the means in our heart to just pray for them. Because when we think that they're just so far off, they're right around the corner. And they just want that love of God to be shown. I've been... You know, been dealing with everything that could possibly be thrown at me, and I, even with work and everything else. You know, I said in the last two days, I went to work for for no reason at all, as I told my wife. But each one of those days, you know, I found like myself standing in my own yard for 45 minutes with the truck running, talking to one of my coworkers about Jesus. And he's a little badly my for us, you know, and I told him, I said, what happened with Bethlehem? Some people got it wrong. They seen the buildings. They seen the organization. I said, but Bethlehem was a, was, to me, it was not just a lifestyle. It was something that was in the heart. <laughs> buildings can't create that. Church is in your heart. You come to church to feel church that's in your heart and to restore what's gone, what's lost, to nourish it. And Brother Micah came down and he went right over everything I went over yesterday with him in the, in the truck. And this is why I come to church, folks. I don't do it for nobody, but for what God wants me to have and what I come to get. You'll see me stumble and fall. And all I ask that you just pray for us because we're wanting to do what's right. We're not wanting to do what people want us to do. We're wanting to do what's right. And, and, and these people that have their children lost, God, he's looking after them. He's touching their heart. I just want him to use me to get to them and, and use us as tools in the daily basis and do what he would have us to do, and we could be pleasing to him. So we just stand here in prayer, and, and God will touch us. He'll touch our children, as, and we'll be made whole. Dear Heavenly Father, we come gracious before the throne, Lord. God, we ask that you reach out there and touch the ones that are lost, God. Lord, that we may be oh so mindful, God, of what we say to others, Lord. And that you might speak to us, God. And that anything that might be wrong with us, Lord, that you might lead us to righteousness, God. For that is the way it is right, God. And that we may be able to love one another, God, because we are all that we have is you. And then when we're reunited with you, God, everything is right. And death, Lord, death, you speak, you speak over death, God, because you live in us. God, we ask that you just continue to bless the family of God and that you touch our hearts, Lord, and just 
Lord, we ask that you teach, teach us how to live, God. Teach us how to live. Teach us how to pray, God, and to spend more time with you. Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen.